I'm going to show you how to use an incredibly important feature of vRealize Automation 8. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Vavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Hello and welcome to Vavork. This is the first in an eight part video series where I'm going to be talking about a very important feature in vRealize Automation 8 called subscriptions. Now, if you're already familiar with subscriptions and events from the VRA7 world, keep watching this video because there's new things that you need to know about subscriptions in vRealize Automation 8. On the other hand, if you've never heard of subscriptions and you don't know what they are, let's spend a few moments talking about what they are and why they're so important. So here's my definition. Uh, you can read online in the official VMware documentation for their view of what subscriptions are. But for me, in a nutshell, to grossly oversimplify things here, to me, what VRA event subscriptions are is a mechanism that allows us to integrate vRealize automation into your IT environment. So what does that matter? Why do we care? Well, what we're able to do with these things called subscriptions is to listen for certain events occurring in your environment. So for instance, in VRA, if a user goes in and requests a deployment of a machine from a blueprint, that triggers an event. And what we can do is say, I want to listen for that specific event. So I create a subscription. I say, I want to listen for that event. I want to pay attention to events when machines are being deployed from blueprints. And when that specific event takes place, vRealize Automation will kick off a vRealize Orchestrator workflow that I choose. And why does that matter? Well, that matters because in vRealize Orchestrator, when I create workflows, or if I use a pre-built workflow, those Orchestrator workflows can integrate with essentially any part of your IT infrastructure. But again, that's my definition. But let's go into the lab environment and start showing you vRealize Automation 8 and these subscriptions. Let's go to the lab. As you can see, I'm logged in to vRealize Automation 8, which is actually comprised of a number of different services. Uh, the three of the main services are Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, and CodeStream. We'll talk about those last two in some future videos. But for right now, I want to focus on Cloud Assembly because Cloud Assembly is the service in vRealize Automation where we get to set up these things called subscriptions. So let's go into there first. Let's go into Cloud Assembly. In Cloud Assembly, we have these things called blueprints. So if I go up top here to the blueprint section, as you can see, we can define different blueprints. And as you can see, we already have a handful of them. We can create these blueprints from scratch, or if we want to, we can download pre-built blueprints from VMware's Marketplace. So let's do it that way this time. So I'm gonna click on Marketplace. And uh, this is the same Marketplace that you might know as marketplace.vmware.com if you've ever been there. This is just the direct in-product integration to that same website. So the marketplace, as you can see here, is uh, essentially a clearinghouse for all sorts of different types of software that you can add into your VMware environment to enhance the VMware products that you already have. And most of the things that you'll find here are actually available for free. So I'm not trying to sell you anything new. Rather, these are things that we can download to enhance the VMware products that you already have. And those products include not just vRealize Automation, but also vRealize Orchestrator, vRealize Log Insight, vRealize Operations, and other products. But in the case of vRealize Automation, what we can do is download these things called blueprints. And as you can see here in our uh, Marketplace website here, we have a number of different blueprints that you can download. These are all already pre-created blueprints. And uh, I'm just going to pick, for sake of illustration, this one here called Drupal Open Source 8 on Multi-Cluster SQL. Um, if you've never heard of Drupal, 
Uh, Drupal is a content management system. Uh, it has nothing per se to do with subscriptions or VRA specifically. Rather, I'm just using Drupal because it it's a, an interesting blueprint. So let's go ahead and open up that blueprint. And what we see here, first of all, is actually not the blueprint, but information about what this blueprint is. So as you can see, there's a summary section where it tells us what this blueprint's about. So Drupal is a popular open source content management system. Uh, for each of these blueprints, it will give you technical specifications of the blueprint. There's a section for explaining uh, where to get support for this particular blueprint. Because after all, some of the blueprints are from VMware, other blueprints are from third party companies. And additionally, there's a review section where you can submit uh, your review feedback on each of these different blueprints. But let's actually go ahead and get the Drupal blueprint by clicking the Get button. Uh, obviously, here we have our uh, licensing screen. So read the end user license agreement. And when you have read it and understand it and agree to it, check the checkbox and then click Next. As we get this blueprint, we're going to need to tell VRA exactly where we want this blueprint to go. And as you can see up top here, we can say either I want to add this blueprint to a project. We'll talk later on about what projects are, or I could just download this blueprint as a local file, a YAML file. So I'm going to go ahead and add the blueprint to an existing project called Field Demo. If I want to, I can have multiple projects in VRI's automation, which allows me to divide up my users and the resources that they use when they use VRI's automation. But currently, I only have this one project, so that's one I'm going to choose. And then the last piece of information that I need to supply here is the name that I want to call my blueprint. I'm just going to go with the default name here and click the Git button. All right, so now I have a new blueprint. Let's go over and take a look at the blueprint. So we click on the Blueprints tab, and here's my new blueprint. Let's actually go ahead and click on our blueprint to open it up. And as you can see here, we are in the vRealize Automation Blueprint Designer. In the Blueprint Designer, uh, there's essentially three main panes here. Over on the left side, we see the Components pane, where we can pick various components to add into our blueprint. For instance, if I wanted to, I could go to vSphere, uh, drag one of these vSphere machines into our middle section. The, the, the pane in the middle is called the, the, the design canvas. So if I take something such as a vSphere machine and drag it into the canvas, essentially what I'm doing with that simple drag and drop option is saying, I want this blueprint to build a vSphere machine. But as you can see, we can also build machines in our blueprints for Amazon machines and um, AWS machines and GCP machines. Plus, we can also deploy containers, um, Kubernetes style, um, and do lots of other things. So as you can see, there's a very comprehensive list of components that we can add to our blueprints. Now, I'm not going to drag and drop any of these components because as you can see in the design canvas here, I already have a fully flushed out blueprint. And if we take a look at this blueprint, as you can see up top here, these two entries say that we want, when the user deploys from this blueprint, we want to deploy one or more application servers that contain the Drupal content management system software. So this part of our blueprint represents our our application server. And then over to the left of that here, we can see some other machine components that will be used to deploy the SQL database that Drupal is going to use. Now, the SQL database that we use, if we click over here, uh, you'll notice over in this blueprint code, we'll explain what this blueprint code is in a moment, but over in the blueprint code, we could specify what type of database we want by picking different images. But in addition, in the blueprint, we can, in the design canvas, we can also see that there is a network component that allows these two machines to communicate not just with each other, but to potentially to the outside world. So I uh, briefly showed you over here on the right side, something known as the YAML editor. This YAML editor contains code that describes exactly how this blueprint deploys the software and machines and networks and other components that it's deploying. So again, this code is in something known as YAML, YAML 
uh, is Y-A-M-L, stands for Yet Another Markup Language. And uh, you can learn more about YAML in our training classes or in future videos here at Vovork. But each of these components that we dragged in, like this SQL database and this Drupal uh, application server and even this network, all of those components and any of the other components that we drag into the Blueprint will automatically get YAML code inserted over here into the YAML editor, which we can use in the default form, or if we want to, we can modify that YAML code. But again, this is just a quick introduction to the Blueprint Designer, but we're here not to talk about the Blueprint Designer, but rather we want to talk about subscriptions. So let's get back to subscriptions. So the reason why I brought you here to see this particular Blueprint and the Blueprint Designer is to show you that the Blueprint will take care of everything that we need to do in order to get our machines and network components and other things like that deployed. So the Blueprint Designer, as we've seen, is very flexible. It can deploy vSphere machines, Amazon machines, Microsoft Azure machines, GCP machines. It can deploy containers. It can deploy all those things for us completely, automatically, without needing any human intervention, which is great because that means users in vRise Automation can go to the self-service catalog and they can request a deployment and the machines will get built out in their entirety which is a tremendous time saver. But, and here's where subscriptions start coming in handy. Even though VRA Blueprints will deploy those machines and take care of all those details for us, there's probably some things that we need done in our IT environment as these machines are being created. And we don't want to perform these tasks manually because if we perform them manually, Oh my goodness, our thing's going to be slow. I don't know if you know this, but humans are much slower than computers. And furthermore, humans tend to make mistakes. So the following tasks I'm about to show you are things that we want to automate. And we can do this automation in VRise Automation by leveraging subscriptions. So let's go see what these tasks are I'm talking about. So in most customer environments, when we deploy machines, whether you use something like the vSphere client to deploy the machines or you use vRise Automation or whatever it is you're using to deploy the machines, it's typically not enough just to deploy the machines. It's great to deploy the machines automatically because that means they get deployed faster and correctly each and every time, but you probably need to do things in your IT environment for those new machines. For instance, before we even started building the machines, we probably needed to go to your IP address management system. Uh, perhaps you use Infoblox or QIP or MinuteMice or whatever your IPAM solution is. You probably need us to go to your IPAM to get the IP address that VRA is going to use to build the machine. You spent all the time and money and effort and resources to stand up your IPAM system. So, of course, you want VRA to use the IP address and other information that's coming from your IPAM system. Additionally, any machines that we built, we probably need to add those into Active Directory. Uh, additionally, some customers have configuration management databases. Maybe we need to check the machines into the CMDB, or maybe as the machines are being built, maybe you have an IT service management system in your environment, such as um, ServiceNow or others like that. And as machines are being built, whether it's being built manually or in an automated fashion, it's quite possible that you need to have information recorded in your ITSM about the build as it's occurring. And when the build is done, you probably want to indicate the builds done in your ITSM. And additionally, um, if there was a problem, not that I expect there to be a problem in deploying your machines with vRise Automation, but sometimes the infrastructure that VRA is running on top of could have problems. For instance, maybe there's not enough disk space, in which case in our automated deployment of machines, we probably want to be able to automatically submit trouble tickets into your issue tracking system, whatever that may be. Again, there are different issue tracking systems and uh, different customers will use different ones. In fact, for essentially all the things that you see listed here, plus the seemingly infinite other number of integrations that you need done in your environment, customers like you tend to have different systems. So if I go to one customer, they'll have certain systems. I go to another customer, they'll have other systems. If I go to one customer for their um, 
for their IP address system. One customer is using Infoblox, another customer is using QIP. So because there is so much variation between different customers' IT infrastructures, vRealize Automation is designed through subscriptions to be able to call out to orchestrator workflows that can talk to any of these types of systems that you see listed here on the screen and more. And again, we can handle doing integrations, not just with these types of systems, but with the specific um, brands and software packages that you have in your environment. So keep watching in this video series, because as we talk about subscriptions, you're going to learn about the mechanism that connects together VRA, the thing that's deploying your machines automatically, with Orchestrator, the thing that can do all these integrations. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to start configuring subscriptions by pairing VRA and VRO.